Questions 21 through 25 on the 2008 Grade 7 Goss Math Contest. Andrea has just finished the third day of a six-day canoe trip. If she has completed three-sevenths of the trip's total distance of 168 kilometers, how many kilometers per day must she average for the remainder of the trip? We have first day, second day, third day, and then we have the next three days. For these first three days, she's completed three over seven of 168 kilometers. And if you do the math, that is 72. So the last three days, she obviously has to complete the trip. She's already done 72, so she has 168 minus 72 remaining in terms of her distance. And that is 96. So 96 kilometers over the last three days. So the average per day will be 96 divided by those three days. And that is equal to 32. So 32 kilometers per day is what she will average for the remainder of her trip. And number 21 is therefore D. In the diagram, PQRS is a trapezoid with an area of 12. RS is twice the length of PQ. The area of PQS is. Okay. So, first and foremost, we have to label this. RS, I'll call 2x. And that means PQ is just x, right? Because they are saying RS is twice the length of PQ. And then the area of a trapezoid, for example, if this is a trapezoid, and this is A and this is B, and top to bottom that's H, the area of a trapezoid is A plus B divided by 2 times H. So using the same formula, the area of the trapezoid here will be 2X plus X divided by 2 times H. Now H we have not labeled yet, so I'll put that in there. I'll label that in the diagram, top to bottom, right there. So that's H. Okay? So I'll just label that. And they're telling me that this area is equal to 12. So this becomes 3x over 2. H is 12. I guess you can write it in terms of xh. 12 times 2 divided by 3. So xh is equal to 24 divided by 3 which is 8. And that's about as far as we can go there. Now they want you to figure out the area of triangle PQS. PQS. Well, triangle PQS is going to be equal to the full trapezoid, which is PQRS, minus this triangle right there, which would be QRS triangle. Okay, so PQRS we just figured out. Well, actually, they give us that in, in the question. It's 12. We didn't really need to figure out anything. But QRS we have to figure out. That'll be 1 half base times height. The base is 2x, and the height is h. So this becomes 12 minus just xh. xh we just figured out was 8, so this becomes 12 minus 8, and that is equal to 4. So triangle PQS has an area of 4, so number 22, the answer is B. There are 24 ways in which Beverly, Diane, Ethan, and Jamal can arrange themselves to sit in a row of four seats. In how many ways can Beverly, Diane, Ethan, and Jamal arrange themselves in a row of four seats so that Ethan does not sit beside Diane? So they tell us that there's 24 ways. 24 is, a, is not that many. So what we can do in the simplest way is just to write out the possibilities, right? So it won't take us that long. So we got B, 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 B. And then we've got D, D, D. We've got Ethan. And finally, we've got Jamal. And if each of these is the first seat taker, there will be six combinations. So I'll just do the first one. B, D, E, J, right? We can also have B, D, J, E. 
and then E can be beside B and that becomes B E D J or B E J D and J can be beside B and that would give me B J D E or B J E D right so very similarly you can do the same for all the others and I'll fill those in and now what we can do is just look at all the scenarios in which Ethan and Diane are beside each other and then we can eliminate those and count the remainder and that will be the answer to our question. So when are E and D together or D and E together? Well, I've got one here, one here, one here, and one here, right? And then over here, these two scenarios and then these guys and then let's see here, this, this, that one, and that one. So those are the bad guys, I guess the scenarios that we cannot have. So the scenarios that we can have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 of them. So number 23, the answer is B. A star is made by overlapping two identical equilateral triangles as shown. The entire star has an area of 36. What is the area of the shaded region? As always on math contests, if you can find a shortcut, a quick way of doing something, then by all means do so. And in this question, the quickest thing to do is to understand that this can be made into identical small triangles by drawing these lines that I'm drawing, like that. And when you do, you'll notice that we've got identical triangles. And what I'll do is I'll just label one of them. I'll just call it S, right? So how many S's do we have in total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 S is the total. And they tell me that the entire star has an area of 36. So 12 S equals 36. So that means if you divide by 12, S is equal to 3, all right? Now they want you to figure out just the area of the shaded region. Well, the shaded region is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 of those small triangles. 9 of those small triangles. So each triangle is, well, I labeled it as S. And S has a value of 3. So that's 27. And that represents the area of the shaded region. So number 24, very quickly, we were able to figure out that the answer is C. The sum of all the digits of the integers from 98 to 101 is 9 plus 8 plus 9, 9, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 38. The sum of all the digits of the integers from 1 to 2008 is. So we've got a lot of work to do in this question, but let's take it one step at a time systematically. First, let's just look at 1 to 10. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, all the way up until 9, right? And if you do that, if you add them up, it's just 9 times 10 divided by 2, which is 45. All right? So that's the first one. Now let's look at 10 to 11. It's 10, 11, 12, all the way up until 19, right? Now we're adding not the numbers. We're adding the digits. Okay, so be careful. First, let's just add up the units digits. That's just 1 to 9. 1 to 9 is always 45. Then you're adding up the tens digits, which in this case are all ones, 1, 1, 1, 1, like that. And how many of them are there? Well, there's 10 of them. So that will be 45 plus 10. Okay? Similarly, if you go from, this was 10 to 19, if you go from 20 to 29, let's see what the pattern is. It'll be 20, 21, 22, all the way up until 29. Again, if you look at just the units digits, that will add up to 45. And if you look at the tens digits, those are all twos, and there's 10 of them, so it'll be 2 times 10, which is 20. Okay? And very similar, you can keep going until we get to 90, 90 to 99. That's going to be 90, 91, 92, all the way until... 99. If you add up the ones digits, it's 45. If you add up the tens digits, it'll be 10 times 9, which is 90. So 
these guys, if you add them all up, how many 45s do we have? Well, we have 9 of them. So 9 times 45. And then 10 plus 20 plus all the way up until 90 is really just 10 times 45. Because if you factor out a 10, it's like 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up until 9. And therefore, this is going to be 855. All right, so that takes care of that one. Now we get to the next part, which is going to be hundreds. So let's look at 100 to 109. So we got 100, we have 101, 102, all the way until 109. And then if you're adding up the digits, the units digits will give you 45, the tens digits give you nothing, and then the hundreds digits, there's all ones, so and there's 10 of those, so you got 10. Okay? And then we got 110 to 119. 110, 111, 112, all the way until 119. Units digits, again, give me 45. But now the tens digits give me all ones. So if I add up those, there'll be 10 of those. And then the hundreds digits are, again, just ones. So that just gives me 10. And then similarly for 120 to 129, this gives me 45 for the units digits. It gives me 20 this time for the tens digits because it's all twos and there's 10 of them. So 2 times 10 is 20. And then for the hundreds digit, it's still 10. And then dot, 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 I'll just jump to the 190s. 190 to 199, units digits 45, tens digits give me 90, and the hundreds digits give me 10. So adding up all of these, I'm going to have how many 45s? Well, it looks like I'm going to have 10 of those, so 10 times 45. And then these guys in the middle, it's like adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till 9, but you have to multiply that by 10, so it's 10 times 45. And then these guys, that's pretty easy. That's just 10 times 10, so that's 10 times 10 like that. And if you add up these, that becomes 1,000. All right, so I hope you're getting the hang of this. And we continue like this, and I'll let you do, I'm obviously not going to do every single one from uh, all the way up until 2008. So I'll just tell you what the results are. If you do 200s, right, the 200s, 2 to 299, exactly the way I did for the 100s here, you'll get a sum of 1100, zero, zero, okay? No different. It'll be the same pattern, the same kind of style. Nothing changes. If I do the 300s, I will get a sum of 1,200. All right? And so on and so forth. So if I do, I'll just write them side by side. 400s, and I add up all the uh, digits, it'll be 1,300, and then and so on. Now at this point, we have finished with the 900s, and we are now moving into the 1,000 plus numbers. But there is a fortunate shortcut to doing that, and I will explain as follows. If you look at this range right here, that was from 1 to 99, right? So once you pass 1,000 and you get to the range 1,000 to thousand and ninety nine all the digits when you add them together will be exactly the same the only difference is that the numbers all will have a one before them so it essentially is the same summation which in this case was 900 but then you have to consider the fact that every number has a one in the thousandth column and there's a hundred of them so those 100 ones which total 100, have to be added. So when you're adding the digits from 1,000 to 1,099, it will equal 1,000. Okay? And similarly, we can do the same thing for 1,100 to 1,199 by looking at 100 to 199. 
that summation was a thousand but remember each of these guys will have a one in front of it so since there's a hundred of them there'll be a hundred ones that you have to take into consideration so you take this a thousand and you add to it all of those ones and if you do you get eleven hundred okay so that definitely helps us figure all of these out very quickly so instead of having to go through this painful thing all over again we can just do this very quickly by adding a hundred so the twelve hundreds these were the eleven hundreds the twelve hundreds well let's look at the two hundreds the two hundreds gave us a sum of eleven hundred so we have to add one hundred to that so the twelve hundreds would give us a sum of twelve hundred if you want the thirteen hundreds we would look at the three hundreds which is right here and the three hundreds had a sum of twelve hundred and again when you're looking at the thirteen hundreds you're looking at the same numbers but each number will have an additional one so you have to take into consideration that there's a hundred ones so you add a hundred to this number so that becomes thirteen hundred and similarly you just fill out the table like that all right so we're almost done our final is going to be two thousand to two thousand eight right so i think i can squeeze that in here so that's going to be one plus two all the way to eight and that is eight times nine divided by two which is 36 and then I've got to add these twos and there's eight of those or um, nine of those so nine times two which is 18 and that gives me 54 so there we go I've got all my numbers here so let's add all these up now I've got 45 I've got 80, 855 a thousand then I've got all of these I've got 1,000, 1,100, all of these, and finally my 54. Adding up all of those numbers, you get a grand total of 28,054. And for this question, that is answer choice E.